Okay, so we're going to continue on with our permutations and combinations unit today by learning, of course, about combinations. Here we go. Uh, so again, we're continuing it. We're going to talk about the difference between a permutation and a combination. We're going to do literally truckloads of examples of combinations. That's the best way of, you know, working with these, like seeing examples. There's not really much definition-wise we can do. Uh, and then we'll do combination problems with at least or at most X number of something kind of questions. That'll make more sense when we get there. All right, so permutations and combinations, when objects are selected and arranged, it implies order is important. So when we talk about arranging things, that implies order is important. Uh, the arrangement is called a permutation. Permutation is where you're picky and order matters, right? Now a combination is a selection of a set of objects in which the order of selection is not important since the objects will not be arranged. In other words, a combination is just where you're basically picking some things and grouping them together, the order doesn't matter, right? So uh, same example from yesterday, selecting a first, second, and third place prize winner from a group of contestants is a permutation because the order they're in, or the order they're selected in rather, uh, actually matters, right? Uh, now, if a group of people are chosen to form a committee or something where, where everyone has equal power, so it doesn't matter if someone's not first, second, or third, you're just forming a committee of people, that would be a combination. Because again, order doesn't matter. You're just looking to fill uh, a certain number of people in a role. Uh, order wouldn't matter, okay? Uh, another example of that would be like when we do group, group projects and stuff in class, and if I just randomly group you in groups of three, uh, order doesn't matter. You guys are all in the same group. Uh, there isn't someone who's in a different position than someone else. Uh, now, with some irony, there's uh, the fact that a combination lock that you use in your locker, technically that should be called a permutation lock uh, because the order you input your quote-unquote combination uh, actually matters, right? So if your combination was like 35, 20, uh, you would actually have to put it in that order. It's not the same thing as putting in 20, 35, right? The order matters. So really, it should be a permutation lock, not a combination lock, but hey, I wasn't the one who, who named them, right? All right, so with combinations, they have their own formula. It's very similar to the one for permutations, and it is on your formula sheet. Uh, if n objects are selected r at a time, and the order is not important, then the number of ways of selecting these r objects can be determined with this formula right here. So n c r, so n objects, and you're choosing r of them. That's how I always would say it, n choose r, uh, is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times by r factorial. Uh, now, what's weird about combinations, and don't ask me why, it's just an old-fashioned way of doing it. Uh, oftentimes in the past, instead of saying NCR, they would write it like this instead. So like a really tall, skinny set of brackets where the number of objects you can choose from over the number of objects you're actually choosing uh, is written like so. I literally never use that. Uh, it's very rare that that ever comes around. It is on your formula sheet, just in case they ever do use it. Um, you guys won't have to worry about it. Um, but uh, I know years with diploma exams, uh, sometimes that does show up on a diploma exam, and I, I have no idea why it's even a thing, because I think this right here, NCR, is vastly uh, a better way of writing this. But whatever, it, it happens. All right, so here's an example. Uh, Lotto 649 is uh, a ticket where out of 49 numbers, um, you choose six and you hope that uh, your numbers get picked in the weekly draw. How many different tickets are possible? Uh, well, here's the thing. The order that you pick your numbers in doesn't actually matter because again, they're automatically put in order from smallest to largest, right? So you don't actually have to get the order correct or anything like that. That would be insane. That would make it way harder to win the lottery. Uh, you just have to pick the right six numbers. And as long as they're the ones that get drawn, uh, you're good to go. So since there's 49 numbers to choose from, that's one to 49, you have 49 numbers uh, and you're choosing only six of them. And the order doesn't matter because again, they're automatically put in order from least to greatest, whether you want it to or not. Uh, so 49C6 is going to give us the answer to this one. So the number of possible uh, tickets in a Lotto 649, if you throw this in your calculator or if you use the formula, I, I guess I never mentioned how to throw this in a calculator, I don't think, do they? Yeah, no, I didn't. It's the same way to throw it into permutations in case I don't mention it later on, whatever. Put it in your calculator, put it in the factorial notation, whatever you want to do. Either way you do it, you're going to get 13,983,816. That's the different possibilities uh, for tickets for Lotto 649. Uh, and that's true. Mathematically, that is exactly how many different possible tickets there are. So if you bought one ticket, 
you would have a 1 in 13,983,816 chance of actually winning the lottery. It's pretty, pretty darn low, right? Um, put it this way. I, I took a course in university. It was called Game Theory, where you analyze uh, the probabilities of winning different things. One very simple way of doing this is you wouldn't be guaranteed to win the lottery unless you bought that many tickets, where every single ticket was a unique ticket, right? If you took this number and you multiplied it by however much a lot of 649 ticket is, which I think it's like seven or eight bucks, uh, bottom line is you're gonna be pretty close to $100 million spending on these lottery tickets. And the lottery winnings are like almost never more than 50 million bucks, right? So, so clearly you, you don't, like you're not gonna win, right? The, they're, they're, the lottery is made to make a profit for themselves. Yes, it provides a prize to whoever wins, but the vast majority of the money goes to the lottery itself. There is a huge amount of profit uh, that gets made off of these. Um, really, I guess like it, it depends on your point of view whether or not playing the lottery is a, a thing to do. I don't play the lottery, but uh, if you want, if you as an adult want to do that, go for it. But just understand, there's a lot of people who, who seem to think, "Oh, I'll get my day someday," and they treat it like it's like a, like a job or something like that. It's not. Uh, you're you're going to be on average throwing your money out the window. But hey, if you treat it like something you want to do every now and then for fun. Whatever, I'm not going to judge. All right, so here's another example. If a basketball league consists of seven teams, how many total games must be scheduled so that each team plays each other, plays every other team uh, once? Okay, uh, you might not think of this as being a combination, but technically it is. Uh, let's say uh, one of these teams is Duchess versus Rosemary. Well, if you said Duchess versus Rosemary or Rosemary versus Duchess, it it doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter there, right? So it is a combination. There's seven teams in this league to pick from. You're choosing two, so it's seven C2, okay? So if you throw that in your calculator or if you use the factorial notation on your formula sheet, whatever, you're gonna find that there's gonna be 21 different combinations for that. Uh, so that ensures that there would be 21 different games. You are playing every other team once, 21 games in total. Uh, all right, so what about three times? Uh, well, this one's actually kind of silly given this last one. Uh, there's 21 games if every team is playing each other once. So if they're all playing each other three times, it's just going to be 21 times three, or in other words, 63 games. There you go. Anyway, moving on. All right, next one. At a meeting, every person shakes hands with every other for a total of 300 handshakes. How many people were at the meeting? I apologize in advance for that photo. I just literally Googled handshake, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, that is awful. Uh, all right, anyway, so... 300 handshakes are our total number of handshakes in total. Uh, a handshake, of course, occurs just between two people. So it's going to be like N choose two. There's a certain number of people you're choosing from. That's what we want to find. You're choosing two people, and that's going to equal 300 in total. Now, if you're just using that function in your calculator, you're going to have a bad time on this one. Like You're not going to be able to solve this at all because we're looking for the number that you're choosing from. Well, this is where that formula becomes a lot more useful. Uh, just to remind you, the formula was n factorial over n minus r factorial times by r factorial. That's n c r, right? Uh, we can use this to our advantage. n is our unknown here, so we know it's n factorial over in brackets n minus 2 factorial uh, times by r factorial, so times by 2 factorial again, and that equals 300. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of my 2 factorial by multiplying it to the other side. Well, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so really it's just 2. So I'm going to times by 2 on both sides, and we're going to find that n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals 600. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want you to understand uh, what n factorial really is. n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on all the way down to 1. Whereas n minus 2 factorial is n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 all the way down to 1. What I hope you notice is, if I started breaking this down, I'll just kind of like erase the factorial here. What I hope you notice is n minus 3, yada, 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 that this is going to be, oh, let me get rid of that factorial sign. This is going to be one of those cases where you're knocking out a huge chunk. That should be n minus 1. It's not very clear. My apologies. You're knocking out a huge chunk of what your overall uh, thing is here. Uh, to break it down to something smaller. So bottom line is, what I'm trying to get to is, you really just have n times n minus 1 equals 600. Now n times n minus 1 is n squared minus, uh, uh, minus n equals 600. Uh, and then you can bring everything to one side, and you can see that that's n squared minus n minus 600 equals 0. 
that's just a quadratic. And you can use your sum product rule to start factoring this one. This one's a bit of a tough sum product rule because 600 is quite a large number, but take my word for it. The two numbers are going to be uh, x minus 25 times x, or oh, sorry, not x, n, my mistake, n minus 25 times n plus 24, because 25 times 24 is actually equal to 600. Uh, again, you, you might be really wondering how I did that. I guess another thing you could do is you could use the uh, quadratic formula. That would help you out here. But bottom line is from this, in order for this to equal zero, either n has to equal 25 or n has to equal negative 24. And let's just put it this way. I sure hope there's not negative 24 people at this meeting. Uh, so there are 25 people at this meeting. And again, if you ever wanted to confirm this, you could just say uh, 25C2 and that will give you 300. So you can always check your work in case you're wondering. All right, next up, a basketball coach has five guards and seven forwards on his team. How many different ways can he select a starting team if these following conditions are here, right? So uh, we want two guards and three forwards. This is where we get into those cases where there's kind of some extra rules to it. You might remember last, uh, last class I said, or in math means adding, and and in math means multiplying. The and here is where we're going to actually start seeing that come into play. We need to choose two guards and three forwards. Well, your team has five guards, so you're choosing two guards from those five, so five, and you're choosing two. And we need to choose three forwards. Well, we have seven forwards to choose from, so seven, choose three. What this is saying is we're taking all the possibilities for the number of guards we could take, uh, and we're multiplying it by all the different possibilities for the number uh, of forwards we could take, right? And again, order doesn't matter here. If you're picking like, I don't know, three, three people, just whatever names or whatever for, for your forwards, right? It doesn't matter what order you pick them in, right? So that's why it's a combination. Anyway, what this is going to become, if you throw this in your calculator, I'll just do it all in one go. This times this, uh, it's actually going to be 350. So there's 350 possible uh, starting teams you can make given that kind of setup. Uh, what about the next case? The star player who plays guard must be included. Okay, so of your two guards you're picking, um, you have to include uh, you have to include that star player. Well, here's what it's going to come down to then. Uh, since you have to include your guard player, really all we're doing is we're choosing four people on this team. Uh, so we need to pick one more guard and three forwards. Uh, so what we should do is we'll focus on those guards first. If we're picking one guard, it's going to be we're choosing one. Think about how many guards there are to choose from. Well, you've already chosen your star player, so we're not going to count him. It's just going to be four choose one this time. Four choose one because your star player has already been chosen. You need one more guard to fulfill this. We're going to times this by seven choose three because, again, your forwards still have to be included. If you throw this in your calculator, you're going to see that there's 140 different possibilities. Last one here, Connor and Zane, who are both guards, cannot be on the floor together. You do not want both of them on the floor together. Uh, here's how we can break this down. 5 choose 2 is equal to 10. And the reason this is notable is this is how many pairs of guards there are. So the number of guard pairs. Right? So there are 10 different ways we can choose two guards from the 10 guards we or from the five guards that we have on the team. Now, one of those 10 pairs is Connor and Zane, or Zane and Connor, right? It's the same thing, right? So one of those 10 pairs is Connor and Zane. Let's take that away from this five choose two. So that just makes it nine. Uh, so there are nine possibilities left where we're not counting both Connor and Zane being chosen. Uh, and then we have our three other forwards, right? So uh, seven choose three. What that's gonna give us is actually only 315. So 315 would be what we got for that where we're not choosing Connor and Zane, uh, at least not at the same time. We can choose them individually, just not both at the same time. All right, next up, uh, a committee of five people uh, is going to be selected from a group which contains eight men and seven women. How many committees are possible with no restrictions? Okay, so by no restrictions, we mean we don't, we don't care how many men or how many women are in this committee. There's no restrictions, we're just picking the people. So seven women and eight men means there's 15 people total, uh, and we need to choose five from that. So we can just say five, or sorry, 15 in total, choose five because it's a committee, order doesn't matter here. 15 choose five is going to give us 3,003, right? So there'll be 3,003 possible different committees 
uh, order not mattering there uh, with those 15 people. Uh, now, what about this next one? Exactly three women. This is where things get a little bit weird. When we're asked for exactly three women, let's break this down in terms of what this committee is actually going to be. Three women on this committee of five people means there also, there also will only be two men, right? So what we're doing is it's like we're choosing from the eight men, we're choosing two, and so times, we're choosing three women of those seven women that uh, were candidates. So seven, choose three. Throw that in your calculator, you're gonna find that's gonna equal only 980. So 980 possibilities where there are exactly three women and exactly two men. Uh, what about no men on this team or on this committee? Well, if there are no men on this committee, then that means we're only choosing from the women, right? So in other words, we're choosing from the seven women and we're choosing five of them, all five of them, all five from the seven uh, women, right? Uh, that's gonna be the number of committees we have that are just female from these candidates, and that's going to be 21. Now, if you're scratching your head right now and you're thinking, well, why, why don't we consider like the men in the calculation? Well, put it this way, if you're making a committee with no men on it, for instance, those eight men that are part of the group you're selecting from, they might as well not even exist at all, right? So that's why we just ignored that altogether. Uh, it's seven, choose five, okay? Uh, a few more questions with this exact same context. What about this, at least three women? Okay, this is where you gotta be really careful. At least three women means there could be three women, or there could be four women, or there could be five women. Notice the ors. Or in math means we're adding things up. Now here's some good news. We've already found the answer for if there's three women. That was on the last slide. That was 100 or 980, right? So 980 or, excuse me, I'm just gonna take a drink here. I'm losing my, losing my voice here. There we go. Now I'm a little bit better. Just so you know, this is like the sixth lesson I've recorded today. Just by the way, I've done science nine and math 30. But anyway, uh, four women, would mean uh, we got to calculate that one. So four women, we'll do this in brackets. Uh, four women means of the seven women that are applying, we're choosing four. And of the eight men that are applying, we're choosing one. Four and one, of course, makes a committee of five. Uh, or five women. Five women, we also already calculated, that was 21. Throw all that in your calculator. Maybe you want to do this piece first and then add it to the uh, 980 and add it to the 21. Uh, either way you do it, though, it's going to give you 1,281. There we go. Uh, what about this one? At least one man. All right, so that means either uh, one man or two men or three men or four men or five men. That's a lot. Like that is a lot of different possible things. That would take you a long time. That, there's nothing wrong with this. You can try this. At least one man, you can go this, plus this, plus this, plus this. We don't know any of these. Well, I guess we know this one. We know two men, right? But other than that, we don't know any of these. Well, let's maybe uh, reframe this just to save ourselves some time. Uh, at least one man is the opposite of saying no men, right? Now, we found before no men, which is the same thing as five women, uh, is 21. There are 21 possibilities for no, no men, right? So zero men is the only other possibility here. There's 21 possibilities there for that. All of this else, would be all the other possible choices. Well, in total, remember from the very first one we did, there was 3,003 possible choices in total. If we take away the one possibility with zero men, which again was only 21, that'll tell us how many possibilities there are where there's at least one man present. So 3,003 minus 21 is 2,982. There you go. Hopefully that made some sense. That, that, that is kind of a weird context, but if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, in all the possibilities, uh, hopefully that is decent. Uh, what about this one? At most one man. All right, this one's a little easier to work with. At most one man means there's either zero men or there's one man, okay? Zero men, we've already calculated that one before. We've seen that, that's 21, right? That's the same thing as five women. One man, however, we haven't calculated, at least I don't believe we have. No, we have not calculated. Oh, maybe we have. I guess it technically would be this one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be this one, four women. But shoot, I didn't write down what that number was. Oh, well, we'll, we'll recalculate it. Zero men, though, we know is at 21. So 21 or one man. So or one man would mean of the eight men, we're choosing one. And of the seven women, we're choosing four. 
So it is the exact same thing, same four women. It's the exact same thing. Anyway, throw that in your calculator. What you're going to get is that's going to be 301. So 301 possibilities on that one there. All right, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, we're going to move on to one of the last contexts. It's with a deck of cards. I put a little preamble here because just in case you don't know the details behind a deck of cards, but a deck of cards has 52 cards in total. Decks of cards have four suits. There's hearts, which are red, diamonds, which are also red, spades, which are black, and clubs, which are also black. Uh, now, there are 13 cards in each suit, of course. 15, or 52 divided by 4 is uh, 13. Uh, and of those cards, there's one ace. Then there's two just uh, to 10, so two, three, four, et cetera, all the way up to 10. Then there's a jack, a queen, and a king, and those, of course, are your face cards. Uh, so using a standard deck of 52 cards, how many different five-card hands uh, are possible with, first of all, no restrictions? All right, so we know there's five-card hands, right? Picking five cards out of the 52, no restrictions. So we're going to say 52. Uh, and because we're just making a hand of cards, order's not going to matter here. You're just going to have your cards in your hand. Uh, it's going to be a combination. So 52, choose five. Throw that in your calculator. You're going to find that you get 2,598,960. Now, what about all hearts? So in other words, how many possibilities are there where it's just hearts? Well, again, just like the one before where we're making uh, a committee, if you're only looking for the number of card hands that only have hearts in it, you might as well ignore all of the other cards uh, in the entire deck uh, and only focus on the hearts. So there'd be 13 hearts and you're choosing five of them. So 13 C5 is gonna give us 1,287. Hmm, interesting, all right, moving on. Uh, again, using that same standard deck of 52 cards, how many different five card hands are possible with all the same suit? Okay, so this one is uh, interesting. Remember, we already found all hearts. All hearts means there were 1287 in total. Now, logically, because it doesn't discriminate in a deck of cards, that would be the same as all diamonds, or all spades, or all clubs. And because of that, we can just take that number, 1287, and we can just times it by four because it's like this is for hearts plus the ones for diamonds plus the ones for spades plus the ones for clubs right so you just might as well times it by four that's going to give us 5148 there you go uh what about this one four queens well this is going to be really uh similar to that uh committee one we did a second ago uh four queens means we're doing four queens and one of anything else because again, it has to be a five card hand. It's just four queens and one of literally anything else, okay? Now your four queens, what we have to think about there is we have to pick from only our queens. Well, there's a queen of hearts, a queen of diamonds, of spades and of uh, clubs. Uh, so really it's four and you're choosing four from that, right? So of the four queens you're choosing, you're choosing all four of them. Uh, and so in other words, instead of writing and I'll write times, one other card. Well, we've already chosen our four queens. So think about all the other cards that are remaining in this deck of cards. There's going to be 48 cards left, and you're choosing one of them. Okay? Uh, throw this in your calculator. What you're going to find is that this is actually just equal to 48, which should actually make sense. If you're picking four queens, that's all the queens in the deck. Now you're picking one other card. There's only 48 other cards to choose from. So yeah, it'd be 48. There you go. No big deal. A uh, couple more here. Uh, this is this. Whoop, this is it, actually. By the way, we're we're pretty much done after this. Uh, exactly two kings. Okay, so that means uh, we want two kings and three other, but they just can't be kings. So not kings, right? Because if it was three other of any other card that are left, one of them could be a king. We gotta watch out for that. Uh, so if we're picking two kings, that means we got four cards to choose from. Those are all four of your kings, and we're choosing two of them and three other cards of your remaining cards that aren't kings. Well, the ones that aren't kings are gonna be 48 cards left that aren't kings. Yes, you've only uh, chosen two, uh, so it could be 50, but really of the 50, two of them are kings, so really we want it 48. So 48, choose three, uh, throw that in your calculator and you're gonna find it's a much bigger number than we've been dealing with, uh, 103,776. All right, next up, at least two kings. I'm gonna have to take another drink here. Ooh, I'm losing my voice. Ah, there we go, all right, much better. Okay, so at least two kings. Uh, that means we want either two kings, oops, two kings, or three kings, or four kings, 
uh, and we can't have five kings, so that, that's, that's all our possible outcomes right there, right? So there we go, two kings or three kings or four kings. All right, well, we already know exactly two kings. We calculated that in the last one here, so that's 103,776. Um, we also know four kings because it would be the same thing as choosing four queens. That was 48. So really what we got to do is we got to figure out this three kings thing. Well, three kings, let's put this in brackets. Three kings means of the four kings, we're choosing three of them. And of the 48 other cards, we're choosing, I guess there'd only be two left to choose from there. Uh, plus four kings, I'll just remind you, four queens was 48, so it'll be the same thing for kings. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, throw that in your calculator, though. What you're going to find is it's going to be 108,336. All right, last but not least, at most one ace. We'll interpret what that means. At most one ace means either zero aces or one ace. Okay, so let's deal with this one. Zero aces means you are not picking any aces. You might as well take your aces and throw them right in the trash. Now there's one ace for each suit. So for zero aces, that's the same thing as just saying 48, choose five. Was 48 we're ref referring to there or all your cards other than your aces? Or one ace. Well, one ace means of the four aces you have, you're choosing one of them. And of the 48 other cards you're having, you're choosing four of them to make up your five cards in total. Throw that in your calculator and you're gonna see that it's 249, ooh, wait, more than that, way more than that, sorry, not 249, it's 2490624, break that up into chunks, that's 2,490,624, there we go, we're all done. Okay, so that was another long lesson today, guys, I apologize, but again, it is important that we go over this and it is our last chapter. This was our second last day of Math 30-1, look at us go. For practice, I want you to try some of these questions here. Make sure you got it down pat, especially those at least or at most kind of questions. Uh, and contact me if you have any questions at all. Uh, chapter test, of course, will be on Friday. I'll have it open to you right after our Thursday Zoom. Um, but aside from that, best of luck.